Dendrobium monificum is one of the most beautiful endemic orchid of New Caledonia distributed on the whole Grand Terre. Seeing as we are in France, <laughs> that would be the main island. It grows on branches in humid forests or on lava rock. But we are not in the French colony of New Caledonia. We are here in southern Spain. And this is my first time bloomer. And here on Ninja Orchids, where successes are defined as we, and any possible failures are defined as moi, me. <laughs> I really appreciate that you clicked on this video. I hope you stay. I have more to say. Isn't she beautiful? So celebrating successes on the patio are defined as we. If I do change into I, that is just because I'm a creature of habit, but we did it. This orchid arrived in my collection in 2018. The moment I saw her on Alberto's channel in bloom, I said, yep, she's a must have. Thank goodness she was available because this orchid is red listed. It is threatened in its environment because of human intervention, because, you know, hunter gatherer, as well as wildfires and rats. So I cannot express how thrilled I am that a Dendrobium munificum is happily growing away in southern Spain in my collection. Let me just say that the five years since I received this orchid, they went pretty fast. Some orchids you're like thinking, come on, let's bloom. But this one is so unique and so funky. I just loved seeing the structures for what they are. They are just so different and appealing to the eye. So let's just say if I had never, in adverted commas, gotten this orchid to bloom, I wouldn't have been so disappointed because my circumstances for my orchids for four months of the year are pretty stressful. And all I ask of my orchids is to just please live. Now in the books, they say that this orchid blooms from early spring through to fall. Well, we are here in fall. Imagine my surprise after up potting, because that's all we did a couple of months ago. We just up potted this orchid for the first time. <laughs> Imagine my surprise when I saw a spike growing. Now, the fact that there is a spike actually that we can all enjoy is because of her funky pseudobulbs. Normally, I am a peeler. I like to take things off to make sure that there are no pests hiding in the sheaths around the pseudobulbs. But because these are so furry, so interesting, I've never peeled on this one. The bare bulbs that you see at the back, that is how I got her. I didn't go after her myself. And thankfully, because behold, a spike popped out of the latest growth, which started growing late winter of 22-23. That is normal for my Munificum. The past years, I've had growth during the winter. And well, let me tell you how I've taken care of this orchid so that you can see the differences and to also understand how little light she actually needs to be doing this. Granted, this is her first time blooming. She has 40 blooms on a single spike that branches in three directions. It is fascinating. The expectancy of this orchid to be able to bloom much, much more profusely, well, they have just risen in my estimation <laughs> exponentially. So <laughs> we're not going to get greedy. Let me tell you what it took to get her to bloom and to just put it right out there, full transparency. I didn't do anything because light conditions. I can't provide the highlight that this orchid wants during the time of year when the growth start growing because that is our darkest time here in southern Spain. January, February, March. Yes, the days are getting longer, but the winter is more intense during those three months. Trying to look for spring, trying to see if the temperatures at night won't just warm up a little bit so I can take the orchids outside because that is where they will get more light even if it is overcast. But if the temperatures are so low, then the orchids stay inside this orchid grows a new growth during that time frame of course the growth matures once we get into april may and june because by that time i can have orchids outside so the cattleya light levels only come very late during this orchid's growth period in my conditions now imagine what you can achieve with a dendrobium monificum if your light levels are perfect all the time which is cattleya light 
bright, bright shade, in my opinion. Don't let the leaves burn, but give it as much light as you can without letting the leaves burn. Then you will always get yourself a beautiful display. And I can only speak on the bloom count with the next go around. Again, first time bloomer, but we're not going to complain. This is exciting. I was so thrilled to see the spike. So the light levels, keep them nice and bright. Don't burn the leaves, but make sure that you fertilize heavily. This orchid this year got five to 600 parts per million of fertilizer every time her reservoir went dry. Good flushes in between, but I upped the fertilizer quantity once the night temperatures rose. And then of course, a lot of calcium nitrate once the temperatures rose, because I would like to have strong growths as opposed to weak growths that don't have light to back up what they're trying to do as we put calcium nitrate into an orchid with low light it'll reach for the light it'll grow weaker structures maybe a little bit bigger but they will be weak the cells won't be toughened so once i got this orchid outside i started to work with the growth and put in a lot of calcium nitrate and this year at 300 parts per million i said right out of the gates at the beginning of the growing season my plan this year is to bombard my orchids with a good dose of fertilizer where feasible where applicable. Monificum was one of those candidates. Of course, you don't want to be doing that to any orchid if it is still small. So back in the day, I was only doing 300, 200 parts per million, and I wasn't heavy on the calcium nitrate at all. I did go for calcium and magnesium a lot more back in the day. Well, this year it was calcium nitrate and a lot of fertilizer and here we are being that she is such a hungry orchid when she is in active growth it is absolutely possible to consider even upping the fertilizer level a tad more because there's no salt buildup on the surface of my pot that is important that is a sign that the balance is correct so i'm not going to mess with that balance i'm sticking to my 600 parts per million even moving into 2024 when i mentioned lava rock etc at the beginning that she likes that well, mine grows in Lekka when I mentioned reservoir. It is a self-watering setup. When I said she likes high humidity, I don't have high humidity. With one exception, the 2023 season was insanely humid for an extended period of time. I have never experienced that here in southern Spain before. It was an exception. So I can speak on high humidity and this orchid, and I don't know if that is what triggered the blooms, that she had the high humidity, plus the humidity she always gets because of her setup being Lekka and self-watering, there's an increased humidity around the structure of the orchid. Or if my 80% and up humidity throughout June, July and August, incredible to have three months like this, was the trigger for the blooms. Next season, we will know a little bit more. Should I get my super dry climate of an average of 30% Back. My Lekka and self-watering setup also helps me with the thirst this orchid has when she is in active growth, so keep that in mind. If you want to get one like this or if you're growing one like this, water, water, water when in active growth. Even if you're growing in organic media, doesn't have to be this setup. I'm just glad that Lekka and self-watering works well for this orchid and I can pass that information on to you. But if you're growing it in organic media, then make sure that this orchid never gets too dry for too long while in active growth. Not only is she hungry, she is thirsty. Now, if you're growing in organic media, then this orchid would like to be a little bit drier when not in active growth. So the media can go completely dry. It is also mentioned that blooming is triggered because she has a dry period during what is dormant. Doesn't mean she loses her leaves, but she doesn't do anything. So I prefer to call it resting. But my setup doesn't permit the complete dry out of the media. I always keep my media damp, even if she's not in active growth. While I do not have water or anything in the reservoir, my media stays damp because I flush the pot through just to maintain some kind of dampness around the root system because that is the climate that they grew into and they would not be able to sustain a very dry period. So if you have any questions about this orchid and how to grow this orchid in organic media, use the comments please. I can give you all the advice that you need, especially if you fill out the orchid details form, which 
I will link in the description because there's so much more information you can provide me with and we can do a one-on-one -on -one with your orchid. Doesn't have to just be the Monificum, any orchid for that matter, but seeing as we're on the topic of Monificum, that orchid details form will be in the description and fill it out and I'm sure I can help you out no matter your setup, no matter your environment and figure this one out because yes, she is endangered as mentioned previously. So the more Monificums we can get to grow around the world, the better. I can also stop freaking out about my winter temperatures with this orchid because she is in bloom now. She is able to tolerate my low temperatures of 14 degrees Celsius even though she is indoors. That is how low my temperatures get indoors and she can handle that, thank goodness. There's a moment where a leaf started to go yellow and I got some spotting because of the cold and the damp but it never progressed progressed and it never took the orchid out. Which then brings me to the highest temperature that this orchid has to tolerate or has tolerated, not this season, but it was 40 degrees Celsius, which has happened in past season this year, 2023. It was a little bit milder. We never reached those high numbers. But of course she likes a lot of airflow considering her natural environment, which orchid doesn't like a lot of airflow. I move into the next winter with a little bit more peace in my heart when it comes to the future welfare of this orchid bar any human error on my part. <laughs> Fingers crossed that in 2024 we can celebrate another spike. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, I would encourage you to do so. I would appreciate it if you would do so. Thank you so, so much. Follow the progress not only of my Munificum, but my other 300 plus orchids that are scattered around the patio. <laughs> For now, soon we will bringing them in, but I digress. The most amazing thing about this orchid is, of course, once she is in bloom and what she does. I have only ever seen this orchid grow pendant spikes. Mine came out bolt upright and then to my surprise, it branched. I was only expecting one cluster. I would have been grateful for a single cluster. I would have not complained at all. Here she is branching with three clusters. It is impressive. I cannot detect a fragrance. I have tried. The blooms have now been open at least a week. It took a while for the spike to develop, so it was like, don't touch, don't touch. And when I flushed, it was, be careful. <laughs> it would have been so disappointing to go, ah, I snapped the spike. But here we are. It took a while for the spike to develop, but it was so, so interesting because she is currently living on the east side rack behind a white curtain so that she doesn't get burnt, along with cattleyas and other fun stuff that grows on the east side during the summer months. So every day I opened the curtain and then one day there was a bloom that had opened. And then two days later, all of them had opened. So it's been a week of this beautiful show. I cannot speak on bloom duration. I will update that information in the description. Once I see how long the blooms last, after a week, I thought I would find a fragrance. She is not notoriously fragrant. It's not as if, yes, this orchid is being grown because of her fragrance. It's more the orchid, the uniqueness of it, and hopefully saving the species <laughs> from going extinct permanently. The blooms are just fabulous. They are right up my alley. I love green chartreuse buttery blooms. The contrast also with the back of the sepals and petals with a little bit of white, it's all mixed in. Some blooms still are drooping down. So we can also appreciate the tips of the petals. It gives a whole beautiful contrast. And I am happy that this spike isn't pendant. This spike is not supported either. It makes handling this orchid much, much easier. And of course, presenting it to you because I don't have to step so far back from the pot to show you a pendant spike and then, you know, half the orchid is on top. You can even see the foliage. It's just wonderful. Now, her name is Dendrobium Munificum. She came into my collection as Eno Bulbon Munificum. I am not able to discern if Dendrobium Munificum wasn't listed as the accepted name then I would not be able to identify this orchid as a dendrobium via the blooms only. Dendrobiums, in my experience, normally have a little bit of a back tail, something that sort of sticks out as a protrusion on the back end. This orchid is flat. There is nothing dendrobium about this orchid when it comes to the blooms. Seeing as I know how to grow this orchid, but don't understand how the experts determine names, if you know why this orchid is now dendrobium as opposed to Inobulbon, I would so appreciate 
appreciate it if you let me know in the comments. I personally prefer Eno Bulbon because it just makes sense, but what do I know? I just grow these beauties as opposed to taking them apart genetically. <laughs> I apologize for the length of this video. Sometimes geeking out is a must. <laughs> Never mind the YouTube algorithm. Speaking of which, the YouTube algorithm likes it when a video is given a thumbs up. My Eno Bulbon and I, we would appreciate a thumbs up from you at any given point in time. Thank you so much for that extra support. I hope that you enjoyed seeing this first time bloomer. Let me just confirm once again, we did it because here on my channel, because of you, because of you watching my videos, because of your contributions to the channel, as a member, as a thanks, including some treats on PayPal, the celebration is defined here as we did it. And then of course, yes, the failures I will only define as me. But for now, it's cartwheels around the patio all together now. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, for carving out a bit of time out of your day to join us here on the patio. It was wonderful to have you. And because you're still here, thank you for giving me the opportunity to wish you a beautiful day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.